Good morning. Tiger, what? Tiger's right next to me this morning while we start today's video. So, hey y'all, what's up? It's Coach Mara. And today's video, hello. Today's video is gonna be all about exactly volleyball positions <laughs> and what they mean how you can tell what position is for you. So that's what this video is for. Hey, Tiger. Oh, now you don't say anything. Okay, so as always, I have notes here. First one is power. Every girl I coach always asks about power. Depending where you are, this can be called something different. That could go for all of these, but on the West Coast of Canada, we call it power. I'm just gonna say this. Power is normally your most strategic, accurate, and strongest hitter on a court at once. What I mean by that is, yes, strength and power is part of the name and it's super important, but that can always be acquired over time. You can be taught like accuracy and specific points on the court just over time, over practice, getting used to it but that natural ability of being able to put a ball exactly where you want it to go, that's something that's really tough to coach, especially with new players. So if you think you are extremely accurate, you are the person that people will normally look to to make stuff happen. Like you guys are losing, you need, you need a point, like you need, you need something good to come out of this. Nine times out of 10, it's your pow power hitter, excuse me and players who like attention. And I don't mean this to sound like in a bad way. I don't mean that all power hitters are like attention hogs, no. What I mean is that they like the thrill of it. They like having all eyes on them because that position has so much hype built around it. Next is right side. Right side, I've also heard like offside, but offside makes me think of soccer because I used to play soccer. So it's like offside would be like a someone would blow a whistle, anyways. So I call it right side. Right side, I've described in other videos. I will link them in the cards for you guys. Right side is normally for your left-handed people, your lefties, your people with trick feet. So for whatever reason, you can't get the rhythm, the, the pattern of the steps for a spike. You'll normally get on, put on right side. If you're right-handed, it goes left, right, left, and jump up with two feet. But if you're left-handed, it's right, left, right, jump up with both feet. Some people find it easier, Some most people do not. If you're right-handed, you'll normally find the first one I said to be easier, but it's just really easy to hit from for people who are left-handed because the angle is just, is just so that it's not crossing their midline. Again, described it in other videos, go watch it. Personality-wise, they're super chill, but they can be super intense. So all of the right sides I've ever played with were all kind of like, they were chill, they were chill, they were chill, they were chill, and then one point they get to like their breaking point and they're like, I can't take it anymore! And then it was like, whoa, okay. Right sides, just, just watch them, just watch them. Be careful. Setter, mm, setter. So the key to being a setter, the key skill you need is you need to have what we call light hands. So what I mean by that is, when you set a ball, when you hear a ball being set by an amateur who doesn't really know the proper technique on how to set, you'll normally hear like a thud or um, something, you're, like your fingers are hitting the ball. Ma'am, quiet on set, thank you. You'll normally hear your fingers hitting the ball, which just means you're hitting, you're coming at the ball at the wrong time as the ball's coming down. But when you listen and you watch professional setters, it sounds like nothing. So coaches are always listening. Whenever we're hosting tryouts, we're listening for the setting drills. We're hearing for those big thuds. So those are the people that like we don't want as setters. They would be good somewhere else. But what you want to hear is nothing, which seems like an oxymoron. You don't want to hear anything. That indicates to the coach that A, you're hitting the ball at the right point when it's coming down and you're not going too early and you're not going too late where you have to 
hit the ball basically and then you also are your hands are soft enough to where your the ball comes in and you almost cushion it and you let it go you're not pushing you're not trying to force it it's just tiger get down come on what are you doing man okay one thing i will say about setter though if you don't like to run don't don't choose this position if you have a choice nine times out of ten when people get chosen as setters they don't have a choice and you build up that stamina pretty quickly but as a setter you're running around the court constantly even though you shouldn't be in theory you shouldn't be because technically everyone should be giving you a perfect pass so you shouldn't have to move but it is what it is so normally your setters are your strongest stamina wise uh, strongest shoulder wise because the amount of power you need in your shoulders is pretty intense but again strength can be taught stamina you get over time but that soft hands thing that can't be taught it is really really difficult and that's why we choose our setters so carefully and why there's very few of them personality wise setters are the natural leaders of the team because they are the ones that decide who gets the ball when. So it's nine times out of 10. Why do I keep saying that nine times out of 10? I've said in like, every time I'm editing, it's like, how many times do I say this? At least four times every video. I mean, like, I'm not wrong. And I think this video is a count of three times. So, doing great. <laughs> Setters are normally the captain because they're making all of these decisions and they have to know each player's strengths weaknesses so well to the point that they don't even need to hear them to be able to tell where their players are libero lots of girls i coach asked me about this and libero is just if you love defense if you love it like passing is your life this is the position for you i personally don't fall into that category passing's okay it's okay i like hitting more and serving but that's something to think about. Like when you're a libero, you can't hit, you can't serve. All you do is take the stupidly hard balls that other people give you or hit at you, I should say, because it's your job to protect your side. So personality wise, if you are the type of person that is very protective, very strong, like a strong willed person, you want to protect the people on your side, like you're a team, a family, like you want to protect them, this is the position for you. Amazing at defense, love liberos. Liberos are the ones that take off us middles when we have to play defense, so I appreciate them. If you fall into that category, you would love this position. Okay, and last but not least, middles. I love middles. Middles are the tall ones, the volleyball stereotype ones, the big hands, tall tall bodies can't really jump too high because like we don't have to middles are kind of hit or miss like you can either have a middle that has so much energy and like wants to help out and like is really vocal really loud all the time that was me or you can have middles like my other teammates who were also middles who were like super chill didn't want to rock the boat didn't really say a whole lot just wanted to help out where they could and just make life good. That was it. And they normally fall into those two camps. I wish I could say like coaches pick middles not based on height, but like we do because middles have to be tall enough to block the other middles on the other side who are also insanely tall. And the weird part was my, the team that I was on most recently, and that was like, two years ago now geez most of my team was very short like my powers and right sides were about five five six five seven maybe five eight like in that range five six to five eight and they could jump like nobody's business so that that was great but i'm five ten and the the net is like six feet maybe a bit higher and i didn't have to jump a lot i can jump but like i didn't have to so that's always interesting again everyone needs to be accurate but i think the two most 
the two most important positions to be accurate are middle and power because middle you don't have a lot of options i'm just gonna say that right now you're in the middle of the court you have options but there's one person blocking you straight ahead so you can't do that when you're on power you can hit straight it's called line shot you can hit straight and that's fine i can't as a middle because it's like oh there's a person in front of me can't do that so i have to be accurate and more creative with where i place that ball because i have to get around the person's hands that are coming at me oh yes okay personality wise middles are normally pretty confident in their skills we're not cocky definitely not cocky but we are confident in our abilities to the point where you know if you teach us a few things we'll be like okay okay we feel good and then we keep it rolling and then eventually that confidence in our abilities kind of permeates to the rest of the team so when you have a really good middle or a good real really good like set of middles like two middles on a court at a time they will either bring the team up with them like spirits wise like bring up their positivity and their mentality and their focus or if it's like they're not doing well they will crash that team spirit so fast oh my gosh the amount of times where it was like i was having a bad day and like i went to practice and i tried my best and i was doing my best to like stay positive but like my team could somewhat sense it and every time i was like this isn't me is it and i asked my teammates like oh no yeah it's you because like everyone looks to a middle to kind of dictate what's what the vibe is think about a middle as a vibe check hopefully you pass but like i don't know if you're super chill if you are that kind of person that's kind of effervescent and like wants to talk wants to make people happy get spirits up you will love this position and and if you're tall with bigger hands and can do quick spurts of energy you'll be great setters who are like you need like constant energy middles you just need like short spurts of energy and then you'll be fine yeah i remember like some of my giant rallies that would last like five minutes just going back and forth back and forth back and forth the one like absolute killer for just like <laughs> my will to keep going was the as a middle you have to move depending on where the other side is hitting so if the other side is hitting their right side i have to go there right i have to go to my left and help the person help my power hitter block against their the other team's right side and if you do that back and forth motion like at least four times oh you're tired oh you are so tired see and the other guys all they do is just stand there and they're like ready man and i'm like no and i think that's it so that would be the end of today's video thank you all so much for watching please subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see y'all in my next video good job team Thank you.